got to come out and I got to come out. We're coming out. Um, oh, shit. We're actually debating. I don't think we're going to do Europe this year. I think what we're going to do is a like a US slash Canada tour. And so like we'll go out west. Sick. We'll see uh we'll see you guys. We'll see Dan and then we'll come back. That'd be awesome. fun. Yeah. Have you been to Dan's yet? Are you the only one that hasn't been? No, we've been we went oh, okay. uh, a few years ago, yeah. You went too, right, Joe? Yep. Yeah. Yeah, it was Are fun. we bailing on Dan or what? Yeah, we're gonna bail on Dan. Fuck him, he's not showing up. All right. People that wanna be like different Kairos, like but the whole I'm not your typical Cairo. Oh, you're asking what about that? How some people claim that, but I don't think it's that oh, typical yeah. to do rehab or soft tissue or anything like that. Well, I think it. I think that just means I don't spend two minutes with you. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? When someone's like, "I'm not your typical Cairo," you're like, "Okay, so you spend more than two minutes. What else?" But people think it's like enough just to say, "I'm with that person for twenty minutes." Yeah. With a, or like know. when they're like, "I'm a sports Cairo," it just just means yeah. like, I'm not yeah. a whack, a quack. Like, I'm a yeah. That's what I was like. I don't know. Maybe sports Cairo just means you watch sports and you're a chiropractor because the shit that <laughs> fucker does is terrible. Yeah, and what like do you? If you do no extremity work, if you do no soft tissue, and you do no exercise, you don't have to do it on everyone. But like, you should be giving people a few things to do at home. You should be working on some muscles and adjusting people. If you don't do all three of those, I feel like you can't label yourself a sports chiropractor. No matter what cert you got. Yeah. 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 Unless like maybe you're like, you know, you're specialized in a sport. Like, you know, you're a tennis chiropractor and you call yourself because you understand the sport and the injuries. But just that sports chiropractor, I don't know. Yeah. yeah. But what is now that? Everyone's mean? a sports chiropractor. Exactly. It's like, well, yeah. what qualifies it? quote unquote athlete, <clears throat> you know, cause the typical nine to five person that goes to a CrossFit class, you know, everybody's going to qualify that person as an athlete. It's like, well, what's yeah. a true athletic endeavor where is this person getting paid to play yeah. this game? Um, or are they like, what, what's the actual qualification for that? So I never really, I never really understood. Cause I mean, we'll say, Oh, everybody's an athlete in their own specific way. You know, because you have to live life and yeah, you know, pick stuff up, move it around. I guess that's considered an athletic endeavor in comparison to the typical American that's just lazy as shit and doesn't move around at all. I don't know. Yeah, that that should be I considered think. normal, <laughs> yeah. not athletic. <laughs> yeah, I think I think it's more people just trying to not put themselves in a box that people might have preconceived thoughts about chiropractors. Yeah, when people like. When I work on something, even though I'm located inside a gym and all my patients are word of mouth referrals so that everybody knows, like I give exercises or I'll work on an elbow or a knee or an ankle outside of just like the low back or neck or middle back. You know, people are constantly like, wow, I didn't know, you know, I didn't know you worked on ankles before. Wow. You know, I didn't work. I didn't know you uh, chiropractors gave uh, ankle exercises. Like, yeah, yeah, you know, some of us have uh, different kinds of training. Um, it's just what it is, you know. Yeah. And I think people that like will like try to label themselves as uh, whatever uh, sports or uh, anything kind of car. I think they're just kind of trying to like set themselves apart from like what everybody thinks about, which is like, yeah, this this guy's just gonna be like, yeah, I can cure anything, you know, just come on in. Yeah, your spleen's hurting. We'll go to T six. Yeah. <laughs> Let me test the sphenoid. Let me muscle test your sphenoid or whatever. Um, what's his face was doing that you're showing me? You know, what's his name oh, again, Joe? Terrible. Yeah, we'll leave that on. <laughs> <laughs> I thought he was going to forget. He's been recording. Yeah, I almost got it. No, I don't slip. You can't yeah. catch me slipping. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I, I was thinking about it quite a bit today because I was talking to Jess in the car and I was like, it's it's kind of annoying. Whenever I hear that, that I'm not your typical chiropractor, but I think it's very typical to see, at least these days, most people coming out of school, at least in the past 10 years, are going to have some sort of soft tissue rehabilitation background. So it is becoming a little more typical. So if anything, you find yourself a little more within the circle, 
and like the thing that sets you apart, which is what they're looking for, is being fucking good. Yeah, for sure. I don't know. What do you think? Like, uh, what percentage of people are, you know, five minute or less chiropractors? Like, just quick, whack them, crack them, find seven. A lot. It used to be probably 80, 90. Now it's like, you think maybe it's still, 60. do you st- still think it's most? I think it's most. I think it's over it's, half for sure. I think it's I don't know if I could go. Yeah. I guess like what chiropractors are good at is doing a lot of passive modalities where they're not in the room. So, yeah. like, you know, you go in there, they're getting heat and stim for 10 minutes and then they might have a, like a CA go stretch them and then come in and they adjust them. So they're only in there for five minutes. Yeah. But they're there for 20, right. 30 so they don't feel like they've been like shuttled yeah. in, shuttled out. Yeah, yeah, it's all a little game. There's that. Uh, we <laughs> we shadowed a chiropractor while we were in California. He was out in like Campbell. I forget where we found him, but um, you know, his associate was like talking to us, and he's like, "Yeah, I make you know a boatload of money," and we're all like, "Oh my gosh, we gotta check this out." And we went to go um, to go shadow him, and he had, like converted this like house in like a random uh, residential neighborhood in Campbell into a clinic. And it was his assistant walks you up and there's like a giant, you know, where the living room is and the dining room and everything. It's all been like opened up, all open uh, space. And there's two tables. (laughs) There's two tables up front. And then there's like three rows of six or seven chairs, almost like an audience is watching what's going to happen. And, uh, you know, he'll schedule like 12 people at 12 o'clock and everybody shows up and people sit in those chairs and then two walk up at a time and go on the table at the same time. And he stands in the middle in between the tables and then he adjusts the guy on the left and then he adjusts the guy on the right. And then they both no. up and they walk out the door and then two more come in and they lay on the table and then. And so it's just like, it's like, you know, that kind of practice has a giant back door. You know, people go there once and they're like, this is so stupid. I'm never coming back. Jesus. Um, and so he's, you know, he's the kind of like mall chiropractor who's constantly getting in new patients, new patients, marketing big time because, you know, there's no retention. Um, so those kind yeah, of guys are out there. <laughs> yes, yeah. Yeah. Do you think, do you think anyone like that would say I'm not your typical chiropractor? I think they might. I you know think they would. I think they might like, Hey, yeah. I'm different. Yeah. If there's they, one they're, they're, they're not their typical is like, I just the occiput not see, you know what I mean? That would make I, them not your I, typical. I just phenoid. Yeah. Yeah. Phenoid, yeah. Even though, like there's a guy local to Arizona that says that he adjusts A to P, not P to A. I mean, to put, uh, to me, like when you don't understand that, what, I don't know what that means. (laughs) Neither does it. It's super confusing. That makes it sound like they're doing something different. And is that just, is he just implying he does anterior? Yeah. He does (laughs) anterior. And a lot of them standing. That's probably still P to A. Still P to A. (laughs) (laughs) I'm pretty sure. That's like what students say. (laughs) That's crazy. Yeah, I don't know. I just think it's it's a little it's such an odd thing. Like it's like a validation that's not necessary when the person's literally sitting in front of you already ready to get worked on. It's like I'm not your typical chiropractor, you know. It's like, "Oh. Well, you can explain yeah, the only- you with someone that might be different, you know, like whenever I take a history for instance, I'll say, people will say they've seen other chiropractors and I say, "Okay, what have they done with you?" And then they tell me, "Oh, he just kind of pop some things and sometimes I get like muscle stem. I'm like, okay, they're about to have a very different experience. So I'll explain to them that, okay, here we're going to do some soft tissue with this area to try to improve this. We're going to do some isometric ex- uh, contractions into this zone to try to improve this. And we're also going to manipulate this joint. And it's going to go like this. Have you had your extremities adjusted? No. Okay. Well, we're going to be doing that because your knee is hurting you and you can't bend your knee and I'm going to help you do that. But yeah, that's funny that. when I, is I'm not going to, oh, this would be a not so typical visit for you. You know, I'm a little different than the last guy. It's just, I don't need to kind of do this. I'll just let my treatment do that for me. No, the patient, your patients can tell other people that. Yes. 
Yeah. Someone's going to be like, hey, you should go see Dr. Cooperman. And they're going to be like, oh, I don't like car. He's not your typical chiropractor. Dude, go see him. Yeah, exactly. And then they'll come in. I heard you're not like everyone else. And they're like, exactly. Yeah. Try not to be. That's. I think yeah, like, I had a patient um, come in and say, uh, I got an activator. And I always say, well, this is going to be a little different. But the good news is you don't have to come 30 times. Yeah. <laughs> the good news, <laughs> the good news is this works. Yeah. yeah. It's mm-hmm. funny. No, yeah. I, I think um, similar to the provider who's like, you know, a, a lot of people say that you're kind of stuck in this, da, 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 and it's like, no one's saying that, bro. Like, you're stuck in your own world. And I think, like, people that approach a person, like, imagine going to see a doctor uh, for pain, and they, like, can't stop talking about themselves or that the way that they're different than other doctors. Like, I yeah. don't care, man. Like, no. That's not what I'm there for. You know what I mean? Like my knee's broken. <laughs> like, like, yeah. Let's talk about my knee. You know what I mean? And then like when we when we fix my knee, um, I'm gonna tell everybody that you're just like what you said. You know that you're not. Like, do different. you ask what treatments patients have received in the past? Yeah. Especially like, when I, it's I, I always ask that because like I don't want to do the same shit someone yeah. else did to you. You know. Yeah, especially when they say, oh, I, uh, you know, especially in this new gym that, that I'm at, uh, a lot of people have chiropractors. And I'm like, oh, that's awesome. Uh, well, what are you guys doing? And then he's like, yeah, you know, it puts me on heat. And then, you know, I get that stim. And then I get on the table, the rolling table. And I'm just like, all right. Nice. And then he's like, oh, yeah. And then he adjusts me uh, with that drop table. And then I'm good, you know. It's like, all right. Yeah. I, it's something just clicked in my head for something I want to play off of. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll ask something really, uh, respond very similarly. You know, when people are like, oh, I don't want anybody to be like, man, Joe's really good at stretching a piriformis. Let me tell you. Because you might be the best, Joe. The tissue goes, um, a lot of times I'll hear about, like, I ask him, like, okay, what was that soft tissue like? What did they do? They're like, just kind of like rub my muscles while I was face down and massage my back for like two minutes kind of thing. I'm like, okay, did they do any specific work? Like, did they get into a specific muscle? And kind of like, yeah, they move, maneuver my hip back and forth like this. I'm like, okay. So I'm getting an understanding as to like where this person's going, what they usually do. And when they tell me that they're always face down whenever they get a, uh, an adjustment, you better believe I'm flipping them over. Yeah. Yeah. Give them, give them something fresh, something new, and then see how that success works. Sometimes it actually fits the body type really nicely. So they, that's when they stand up. They're like, "Wow, that was different," but really, not a whole lot. Other, than maybe my maybe my force vectors were different. Maybe my the amount of tension I created was different. Maybe the result afterwards when they stand up was way different for them. And that's usually what keeps them coming back. I just make people de- define words. You know, what I mean, oh, uh, my sh- my my shoulder hurts. Point to your shoulder. Like, all yeah. right. You know what I mean? Uh, I talked to a trainer and like, we're working on uh, stability of the scapula. I'm like, what do you mean? Like, show me what you're doing. Yeah. Uh, Upright. You know, they, 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 they grow up and it's, a, you know, I was joking with somebody. I used the word mobility and somebody was like, what is it like, like that wheelchair store? Like, what are you talking about? <laughs> I was like, oh, okay. So like, that's what you think of when you hear mobility is like old people and wheelchair and stuff. Um, so you just make people define things, you know what I mean? Um, and I think that uh, clears a lot of communication up. Yeah. Okay. And then the other thing that I was thinking was a uh, sports chiropractor. That was the plan that I wanted. When someone talks to you about being a sports chiropractor, what does that actually mean? Do we mean like CCSP sports chiropractor? Are we talking someone that works for a team or are we talking someone that like legitimately works with athletes that get paid money to play the game and you have a plethora of that specific sport or a lot of different sports. What does that, what does that look like to you guys? Yeah, I don't think it fits in a box. I think being a sports chiropractor doesn't, when you say that, that doesn't mean anything to me. I have to know more. You know what I mean? I guess sports chiropractor, someone could say it because they understand sports and athletic injuries and they like to adjust those people, but they're like, you know, five minute chiropractors, same shit to everyone, but at least they understand the sport. They're not going to prevent people from going and playing unless they absolutely are injured, things like that. And then some sports chiropractors are 
treating professional athletes. Maybe they specialize in one specific sport. And some, I think, are guys who just treat weekend warriors. And they call them sp- some, themselves sports chiropractors for that reason. I don't know. It doesn't mean a lot. Like when people say sport, I so many people use that word now. It's like, I mean, I know people that are terrible that use sports chiropractor. Yeah. Like I don't come up with it a lot. Like maybe I don't like hang out. It's not like I hang out with other chiropractors or anything, but it's not like I'm coming across people that are like, yeah, I'm a sports chiro. And then they do nothing with sports and you know i know a lot of people that don't call themselves a sports chiro who treat professional athletes yeah it's you know what i mean and then i know a lot of people who call themselves a sports chiro just because they don't want to be a regular chiropractor just so that people think they're not some quack you know quick whatever yeah i've had a lot of people tell me they googled sports chiropractor and my name came up but i think it's just because we have sport in it yeah, that's smart. health, spine, and sport. <laughs> yeah, oh after that old SEO, yeah, that's very smart. <laughs> yeah, that yeah, would I don't be know, man. podcast. How to maximize SEO? Yeah, <laughs> I mean, so yeah, you know, I just started my CCSP program. Um, you know, that was something that I wanted to do from the beginning. Um, I just thought it'd be like a cool thing to do to just get more knowledge and more skills. I'm not looking at being like a, a a team doc. I'm not really interested in working sidelines. You know, during school, I worked as an EMT up in uh, Pleasanton. All right. So you're in Pleasanton. Yeah. So, you know, I worked um, as an EMT sidelines for like Pee Wee football games. Yeah. So, you know, working as an EMT sideline Pee Wee football game, some of these kids are like 13, 14 years old, hitting themselves, hitting each other pretty hard. A lot of concussions, you know, a lot of, you know, uh, there's a dislocation, there's a clavicle break, there is, uh, you know, a bunch of times we had to call, you know, EMS. Um, that's, that's just not the kind of stuff that I want to be doing um, you know, day to day. And then even going through the CCSP program, you know, Bill Moreau is one of the main instructors at least so far and the guy's a legend in the chiropractic world and you know the former head of the USOC and he's talking about like if you're the team doc um you know you're looking at like pre-participation surveys you you're like looking at this like whole 50,000 foot view of the entire program uh you're not just like kind of treating each individual patient anymore et cetera, et cetera. and you know you get farther and farther away from that one-on-one interaction from that thing that you know we cultivate all of these kind of skills to get good at is like working on fixing people um and communicating and all this kind of stuff and then you enter a sports kind of environment and it's very different you know from what you do day to day um so there's people that are you know there's team physicians there's sports physician type of physicians so i think it all depends on what the person wants to work uh what kind of work environment they want to have um and so something like, uh, you know, CCSP definitely, or even the diplomat gives you a lot more opportunities to do that kind of work. But that's not the, re- like, personally, that's not the reason why I went down that route. You know, I wanted to do this for even from the beginning, but it was more like, a, hey, man, I'm a big dork. And I take a lot of continuing education seminars anyway. And this was like the big one that I wanted to check off my list. Um, a lot of cool new skills to learn. Um, that was the main component. It's like, I don't think I'll be you know, even if the Chicago Bulls called and they were like, hey, we, I'm lying. I'd probably take the Bulls job. Uh, <laughs> but, you know, you, you I was know like, I mean, where is he going with this? Yeah, because I'm not really like that's not really what, what we I, mean, I don't think you guys you guys probably share the same kind of sentiment. This is not the kind of work that we specifically want to get into. But there there's plenty of other Kairos that want to do that. Um, yeah. But going back to what you were saying, Chris. When somebody calls themselves a sports Cairo, I don't think it means anything unless I know them ahead of time and I know that they're a CCSP or like a diplomat and I'll know exactly what they might mean if they say that something like that. But for the most part, it doesn't really mean much. Yeah. I don't remember getting a single thing in school about return to play. I learned all of it outside. Yeah. Maybe like emergency, pro- no, Just no. A little bit for emergency procedures. Yeah. Typical really. healing time kind of thing. Right. But return to play measures like, you know, like for instance, working with uh, 
with your car, you know, ACL reconstruction, UFC fighter. Um, what are the metrics that you need to look for in order for this person to be deemed safe to compete again? There's a lot of like a lot of factors in regards to MMA to be able to say, hey, I think it's time for you to start like dialing it up and let's get ready to get into camp and get you a fight. You know, you yeah. should be able to do X, Y, Z. I don't think anybody has the perfect answer for that, especially in MMA. But for the most part, you know, that it comes down to, you know, best practices and more people that have done it in the past and getting with them and collaborating. But I'm with you on the on the sports thing. I, I personally don't aspire to work for yeah. it. Right. I don't know about you, Chris, but I, I personally don't. I don't want someone necessarily telling me 100 percent what to do and then being like, hey, just go adjust that guy. It sounds easy. It sounds fun. But I'd rather that person just come into my office like they typically do. Yeah. Well, yeah, what's funny is like when you see a sports chiropractor, whatever that means, outside in their office, they do a lot of stuff, right? But when you see a chiropractor who works for the Chargers, he only adjusts. Right. Isn't that funny? Right. right. Because they, well, they, they have they have the whole the team. He has one job. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Unless it's unless they're job. also hired just to do ART or something like that too. Yeah. Yeah. Like a Leahy or whatever. Right. But it's yeah, a it's true. It's a top down. You know, it's very much like your chiro, yeah. your skill set coming and do this. It's very similar to like when I you know I had a patient I had potential new patient email me tonight um, saying hey. Uh, you know, we heard you're good. Uh, I got this hamstring issue. Uh, we want to try dry needling. So like they self diagnosed themselves. They chose a treatment that they think is going to work. And then they picked a guy, um, you know, and so now if dry needling doesn't work, it's, you know, it's on me. Uh, um, you know or what I'm saying? Or it's on dry needling altogether. Or it's on dry needling altogether. And so it's the same thing when like you you know, you take this like potentially highly skilled sports chiro who probably does more than just adjust or ART. Mm -hmm. Uh and you're hiring as part of this like professional team. Uh and then you're gonna only tell them to do specific things because you don't know the extent of their skill set. Um, yeah. that's not fair to the athletes. Agreed. Yeah. Yeah, I don't. I never had a desire to work for a sports team. I always said I want to be have the abilities of the chiropractors that work for professional athletes, and then some. But treat everyday people like that. So treat everyday people like they're a professional athlete. Yeah, I think that mindset always appealed to me a little bit more because there's a like professional athletes are fine, dude. You work for the Niners and you retire. There's 50 chiropractors that want that job. They're they're always going to be fine. It's the, the runner who is a teacher. You know what I mean? Like she's been getting shit care her whole life. If you can change that for her, that's way more appealing to me. Yeah, totally. totally. Yeah. I do agree. With, yeah, I'm I'm right there with you on that. I th also think that think about people that are get interested in wanting to become like a a team doc kind of situation. And they have these expectations that the guy that's been there for the past 15 years is just going to magically walk away from his job. Well, people keep those jobs forever. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I know. Yeah. So it's like it creates this almost like false hope, which I feel bad for. You know, like it's a, a better place to, to target would be like growing yourself in your community, maybe working with like middle school, high school. And then developing a name for yourself. And as time goes on, maybe you get a phone call one day and, you know, whatever town the professional team is in that you're in, they give you an opportunity. But yeah, I don't again, think anyone gets hired out of school. You know? the, uh, Definitely not. No. So <laughs> but everyone Chicago in school Bulls, thinks they will. Uh, the Chicago Bulls <laughs> athletic, one of the, one of the athletic trainers for the Bulls, is also a Cairo who also has a PhD in like biomechanics. <laughs> yeah. So it's like the teams aren't stupid. You know yeah. what I mean? Like they're hiring like the best of the best. Yeah. It's uh, like my internship yeah. at St. Mary's with Tony. Tony's a Tony Kearns is an ATC and a Cairo. Right. And his experience is 
is so large and intensive and he knows how to maneuver through the whole entire program. I mean, he was the head of sports medicine. You know, he was the one calling the shots of what's going to happen with literally every single person. Reminds me of Tony Hinchcliffe. I don't know why. <laughs> yeah, he reminds me of Tony Hinchcliffe too. He looks like him. He, dude, he looks so much like him. It's insane. It's, I, you know, I walked by Tony Hinchcliffe at a UFC event in Phoenix. Were you like, hey, Tony Kearns, what's going on, man? I haven't seen you. It kind of messed with me because, yeah, long story there. But either way, because he's also short. Okay. I didn't know he was so short. And I was like, damn, that looks like Tony Kearns. And I was like, wait a minute, that's Tony Hinchcliffe. <laughs> Hinchcliffe is short? Yeah. Oh, um, sure. He's he's hilarious. <laughs> yeah, he's awesome. Yeah. Awesome. Any other final thoughts on that? No, I don't think so. I think no. it's like just, you know, go out and uh, try to be the best you could be and continue to gather skills, you know, be a lifelong student. Um, you're not going to be the sports guy of your local team. Um it's not that glamorous. Helping regular people is probably more, more rewarding. Yeah, I think, I think if you're a student right now and you're, you know, you're about to graduate, I think don't focus on that. Focus on being awesome. Be the best in your community for your people, and then maybe, maybe one day down the line, someone reaches out for a job like that. But it will not be for at least ten years. Yeah. And you're gonna have to have a name before you get that call. Yeah, or you you build yourself the way, you know, good old BB out here, Brandon Booth, is doing it. Right. Yeah. Flying around the country, treating every single one of the linemen. That's the guy, that, in, at least in Arizona, in my eyes, that's the guy that's going to get the call when, I forgot the guy's name, um, over here, when he retires eventually. The guy's in his late 60s, almost 70s. He's eventually going to retire. And I'm almost positive Brandon Booth is going to be the person getting the call. If you think you're going to beat out Brandon Booth, it's, He's made the connections. He's built these crazy relationships very genuinely too. And he's, and yeah, he's a hustler. deserving guy of all that, you know, he, but honestly though, at the same time, I mean, I haven't talked to Brandon in a while. I wouldn't be surprised if he said no. Yeah. I yeah, think well, all that's the time, thing. Like what he wants, you know? mm-hmm. Well, what do they make? It varies. From my understanding, it's usually like a salary for the season or it's hourly. Yeah. I think it's like, like, yeah like, come here. We're going to pay you yourself. 200 yeah. And you have to be there at, from this time to this time. Um, these days, we're going to have the full schedule for you or we just put a table up and then the players come and see you. You adjust them, blah, blah, blah. Or, you know, or if you use just for x-rays, then you go and you x-ray them. <laughs> and, yeah. <laughs> well, you were you will make way more money in private practice. Yeah. Than you will for a professional team. I, I think it's think more like you get to you get to advertise yourself as the Phoenix Suns Cairo uh, and then people come see you. Sure. Yeah. yeah. The public back to the people that build your business. Right. Yeah. All right. Cool. Your community. I think this is a good place to sign off. Sweet. Yep. All right. Until next time, hopefully we have Skinner on next time. If he ever answers. Yeah. I wonder what that fucker is doing. <laughs>